Hello everyone, I'm Mark, uh, Mark Warren, I'm an architect and urban designer from Studio Ego West. During the day and during the evenings I'm a street artist, but don't remember this face. So, um, in both activities, my extracurricular and professional activities, I'm on a mission. And my mission is to create a happy city. And before any of you ask, um, no, I'm not Banksy. So, does this look like a happy city? Question mark. In 2016, research was carried out by Natural England and found that three quarters of UK's children spend less time outside than prison inmates. That is bogus. And that, that's, what's, well, that's what's said. But I'm not here to slander the use of uh, mobile phones or consoles because I'm for one a Mario Kart champion. But this is life and it's fast becoming the norm. People in the UK are now checking their smartphones every 12 minutes in the walking day. My vision is to steal some of those minutes whenever the waking day is spent outside. What I want to do is create balance. Are there ways and devices that affect the way we play? Of course there are. Can we use space as a facilitator to encourage physical and emotional play? Yes, we can. And, have, and we have a social responsibility as architects, thinkers, urban designers to do so. But does the problem start with how we define play? If you write playing into Google, this is the image. And the problem with this is that it's a very specific demographic looking at a very specific activity. But we mustn't forget that play is for everyone. The Oxford English Dictionary defines play as engaging an activity for enjoyment and recreation. We as adults do this every day on our phones, but need more spontaneous play outside. It is essential we play throughout life. There's a weird thought that we get too old to play. Playing is an activity where we connect, socialize, and compete. We exercise our emotions and bodies, it tackles the epidemic of loneliness in our cities, and I believe it has the power to make a happy city. So this is uh, some of my work from my street art stuff. Uh, so it leads me on to this. Um, as I said, I want to create a city of play. It's in human nature, we have to interact, and all of my pieces start to look at that. How can we interact with, with, with the public realm in different ways? So this is one of them. This is a basketball bin. And this was in Croydon. And what I did was I plugged on a hoop on the, back of the bus, on the back of a bin to change how we look at bins. We look at bins differently now. And we can throw something in it and it becomes a game. It's interwoven into the very fabric of place. This is my running track in Mitchum. And what's really interesting about this one was that the hurdles were very high, but I managed it just about. But also, I did this in the dead of night during Ramadan. And the mosque is just down the road. And as they broke Fast, from fasting, they came out and actually some of us had a little race on it. And so I actually believe that if play is there, people will use it, but so often it's hidden. And so this brings me on to Frank the Swing, a three-legged swing, a three-legged chair which I found on the street, and it's named Frank after the three-legged man Frank. What I did was I strung it up onto a bus stop. I made the bus stop into a swing. <coughs> Pretty nice, right? Mm. <laughs> what I didn't know was the next day, I found people really using it. This guy here, for example, this guy was going so hard on it, it was unbelievable. But what I love is Katie Baggy, how she described this intervention. Welcome to Mitchum, where your local playground is your bus stop. The language she uses is so specific. She hashtags playground, and it's, it's, just, it's just, that's telling of what we should do. So this leads me on to what I do professionally at Studio Grey West. And as I said, we're on this mission to create play, the city of play, city of happiness. And this is one of the projects which we really explore that. And the idea being that we create a creative and sociable landscape which you can use and it really uh, facilitates interaction between people. We celebrate play, it's not hidden. So often we find that play is a, is a fenced off area which policy dictates, to, uh, dictates its area and it's not celebrated. However, if we bring it to the forefront, it can be in the face of people and they can actually use it. And crucially, we believe that we should integrate play with the architecture. And this is one of the visuals. So you can see that Sebastian will probably back some assault off of this. And Christian will probably enjoy riding his mountain bike on this. But it is integrated into the very fabric of the architecture. And this is a vision which we believe in. So I have three points just to sum up my presentation on how we can do better, how we can actually deliver play and make a happy city. The first point is integration. How can we integrate play into the city? And this is such an important point that it should be in front of your eyes, it should be everywhere you walk, it should be accessible. The second point is safety first, but don't play it safe. So this is a cat rail, as you can see, you can see the little knobs there, and that's to stop people from grinding on it and scaling. Mm. 
or from me to slide on it on my bum, which I enjoy also. And this restricts the, what we see this object as. And we have to understand that people see objects in different ways. And it's actually a creative thing for humans to think like that. And we should really foster that. We shouldn't, we shouldn't cap things. We should actually promote that. <laughs> and the third is you're never too old to play. And this is my dad at one of my installations, which I did in Streatham, which was this rainbow. And it's crucial that we play throughout life. We shouldn't just say children play. We should say everyone plays. And that's how we keep a very happy nation. Thank you very much. Well,